This week, I want to look at trees that kill other trees. Stay tuned. Bill Mollison was right in this book, page 63, if you want to go see exactly. He talks about proximity of one tree and another tree. And what are those two trees? Well, this is, is or was an apple tree that was alive. And in fact, I'll show you a whole range of our apple trees that have been dying from proximity to if you look here, you'll find it. It was walnuts. Yeah. I thought for a few years, you know what? It won't happen here because the trees aren't as stressed as in other situations. We have irrigation, we have a plastic mulch, and I just thought, you know what? They're not suffering here and the stress is not that high, so they should not. And my understanding was stress is not necessarily an every year factor. It may never even happen. If a plant isn't stressed, it's not subject to disease and insects and even perhaps death. So I thought, huh, that was a good observation, but it doesn't happen in all situations. Well, last year we had a dry spell and even with the irrigation, I think the walnut trees were stressed. And the way this works, it's pretty amazing. The tree can basically weed other trees out if it needs to. So what is that weeding? Well, it happens through the root system. The roots of the walnut, and this one here is right over, two trees over. The root of the walnut spreads out. And go see that Mythbusters root zone video we looked at and actually measured how far some tree roots can actually spread we tend to think it's just you know to the crown no they spread way further and i started to see that here last year and we got a bunch of trees died so the roots of the walnut travel through and exude juglone juglone why because it's the juglandaceae family and I guess that was the good term to call it. So they, they exude juglone when they need to. It's not an all the time thing. It's not something they do systematically every year, but when they're stressed, they have a weapon that can reduce the trees around them so that more of the resources are available to them. Chemical warfare, I call it, but plants do it insects do it there's a whole lot of it going on we just need to realize hey they can use it so let me show you a few examples and the distance from one tree to the other the walnuts to the apple trees so here's one apple tree it was this is one of the original ones when we had an organic apple orchard so it's an older tree it's not totally dead, but it's seriously compromised. And interestingly enough, which is the case with all our dead apple trees suddenly, look at that. Four meters, 12 feet away. Here's a nice big black walnut on this side. And here's another one on this side. So you see, these are fairly close and that walnut these two walnuts basically did this tree in. And then if we take a look at some others here, there's a walnut, a honey locust. Go see that trio video to understand why trios and why it's no longer just an apple orchard. Here's another one. So that apple tree really died quickly. And in fact, 
Here's another one. This one had enough light, but it just all of a sudden died. So there's one, two, four trees right here because of this start of roll. I seeded this year, a few years before we actually replanted this. So all these walnut trees were from seed, but they have done in all the apple trees for a distance. I'll show you some more. Here's a hint. If ever you see a tree producing a whole lot of fruit, you think, wow, that's incredible, the amount of fruit. Often, it's a sign that that tree is about to die and it's doing a last gasp to reproduce itself. And it will have incredible production of fruit. And the fruit may not even be very big because the tree doesn't care on fruit size. It's looking to propagate itself. So it wants to put out as many seeds as possible. So just keep that in mind if ever you see a tree with an incredible load of fruit. Watch, I've seen many, many times over the years where trees had a huge crop and by the time I pruned them in late winter, they were dried up, died. So these here are all destined to disappear in just a few years, partly because they're the walnuts. Now there's a couple that are going against that example. So here's one that's in the same distance and even a little closer from those. But although it's fairly close to the walnuts there, is looking in good shape. Now, this is where Mollison's point about intermediate trees really kicks in. He was pointing out how if you have an apple near a walnut and you put something in between, he was giving the example of mulberries. Mulberries don't suffer from walnut. The walnut don't affect mulberries. So he said, put a, a mulberry in between. Well, I've noticed a few other species that aren't affected. In this case, pear so far, they seem to do well in their presence. Uh, Amelanchier or Saskatoon berry also do well. And plum trees do well. So perhaps because now the roots of the walnuts have to go through the root mass of these other species, they actually don't invade. And so maybe that's a way. So just keep it in mind, perhaps putting a barrier species in between. And we'll see, this has been about 12 years since some of these walnuts were seeded, 12 to 15 years, depending on when they came up because a walnut don't all come out the year you plant them. Some of them can go on for three or four years before they actually germinate. So maybe that's a thing. And I'd like to see if you have any trees that have resisted being near walnut, I'd like to see in the comments, which ones have you got that you say, yeah, it's right next to a walnut tree, no problem. And so I, for years I said, it's not a problem. They're not going to suffer because they're not being stressed. Well, I was wrong. Stress comes eventually at some point, And in that case, the tree, in this case, the walnut can exude the juglone and actually eliminate the other trees around. In this case, just apple trees. This is the very north end of our orchard, we've begun replanting to nut trees. So the whole north end will be the largest trees in the orchard. These will be able to grow to beyond 100 feet in a few years or 30 meters. And what we want to do here is have the tallest trees north so they don't shade the rest of the orchard. But in the meantime, we still have remnants like this one and we have others around here that are apple trees from when this was a monoculture apple orchard. And so we've kept these trees. We haven't torn everything out yet. But these trees, knowing what I now know and knowing what you know, will come a day where they will start disappearing. So these little walnut trees will have to grow up and eventually they will kill these apple trees. 
So we're slowly starting to replant other than the walnut in here just to mix a bit. And knowing now the edge of where these walnut trees will stop because they only, they only spread here for about uh, 10 meters or 30 feet. So after the 30 feet, we want to then plant trees that so far like pear and like plum that aren't affected by the juglone before we have apple trees further on in trios. So that's a point to consider. So we can now have our nut trees and we can have fruit trees, but not nut trees in the sense of walnut next to apple trees. So we'll need to split those two apart and put other trees in between, namely pear and plum trees. So that's just a consideration for how you can interplant having nuts and having fruit trees. If you want your trees to look healthy and alive, then keep in mind, walnut can be a problem tree to have. And if you have a walnut, realize that some trees like this apple may not play well with walnut, which can be sometimes fairly close or sometimes a little further away. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. See you next week. Bye. Hey, please subscribe and check out our latest video.